أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا يضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلوات الله وسلامه عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أما بعد My dear brother and sister in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassad li amri wa ahlul aqdati min al-lisani yafqahu qawli. Allahumma alhimni rujdi wa qini shara nafsi. Allahumma a'udhu bika an adilla wa udal, au azilla wa uzal, au adlam, au udlam, au ajlam, au mijal alayh. Allahumma ya fatah, iftah alayna fatahan mubinan ya Rabbi al-alamin. وبارك لنا فيما نفعل وجعله خالصا لوجهك الكريم. Oh Allah, put in my heart and my tongue what benefit to me and benefit to you. And oh Allah, bless what I'm going to say. And give me wisdom, ya Allah. And give me guidance and give me light. And give me support. And allow what I'm saying to reach the heart of others and be sincere only to you, Ya Allah. And I cannot gain all this without your will and your generosity, Ya Allah. My dear brother and sister in Islam, we talk in the journey of Islam, journey of Iman, part one, journey of Iman, part two, how, with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take us from one stage to another. And we talk in the journey of Iman part 2, we reach the level where we look for the hereafter. And we try to value what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is preparing for us in paradise. Now, once a Muslim really start recognize he or she working for the hereafter, all the understanding of different things in life will be different. And all the priority in the heart and the mind and even desire will be different. You see, journey of Iman, once it reaches the level where we really work for the hereafter and we really want to reach and please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we want to purify ourselves, we're going to start with the heart because Islam is to obey Allah and recognize Allah with your limbs, with your body. It show outside. This Islam to do the ritual for people to see you acting as a Muslim. This is with outside. But inside, this why hypocrite can act like a Muslim and do all the ritual and the reality inside, deep in the heart, they are not a true Muslim. Why? The Iman did not calculate in their heart. This why when some Bedouin 
came to the Prophet and he said, O oh, Ya Rasulullah, we are a believer. Allah denied that and he sent Jibreel alayhi salam was explaining, Say Ya Muhammad, tell them, قَالَ الْأَعْرَابُ أَمَنَّا قُلْ لَمْ تُؤْمِنُوا وَلَكِنْ قُولُوا أَسْلَمْنَا Don't say you believe but said you embrace Islam and Iman did not calculate yet in your heart. And the real Iman did not enter deep in the heart. Now, what I'm going to talk about is only benefit those who really want to reach, those who really want to work for paradise, those who really recognize life is very short and they have to do something about it, and those who are really looking forward to meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, Iman is really to work deep to clean up your heart, to prepare your heart, to modify everything located in the heart to be only purely for Allah. <coughs> Meaning, We start only believing in Allah. We start only fearing only from Allah. And when I said only is only. I start only loving completely Allah. I have no fear of the unseen. I have no fear for the future. I have tranquility. I have peace. I'm happy. I'm content. I already pass the time when I have the fear, uncertainty, worry. If I pass all that and I really calculate in my heart the belief in Allah, and Allah is the doer, Allah is the provider, Allah is the master, Allah is the king of all the king, Allah is the owner of provision, all kind of provision, Allah is supporter. Allah is a protector. Allah is all seen. Meaning I really live with the name of Allah at this time. Now I go to another journey deep down in my heart. The journey of cleaning. Preparing my heart to be only for Allah. And this I need sincerity, honesty, between me and myself. I have to start looking to my own faults, my own habits, even make a list all the bad habits. Study the good habit and custom of the Sunnah, of the teaching of the Prophet. What's the qualification and the characteristics and the behavior and the manner of a Muslim. And when I mean a Muslim, a Muslim according to Allah and His Messenger, not a Muslim exists today. Or what they call themselves Muslim. I'm talking about the Muslim according to the teaching of the Prophet and the example of the companion. You can find many books about that. You start reading. And ask yourself, where am I? You look for brotherhood or sisterhood, somebody to be your mirror. Somebody you trust. And when they tell you, you have a fault in this area, you accept with open heart and start really working against your desire. Because now, this is the toughest one. I have a bad habits. I have to break my bad habits, to build the good habits. I have certain dirt in my heart I have to clean. 
because the closeness of Allah do not come in a dirty heart. The heart has to be purely to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, once you do that, you start with a, in a journey of Ihsan. And Ihsan is to worship Allah like you're seeing Allah. And if you cannot do that, Allah is seeing you. And ta'bud Allah ka'annaka tarab. فَإِنْ لَمْ تَكُنْ تَرَى فَإِنَّهُ يَرَاكَ Scholar in the early Islam they said this is in two levels one level and muraqaba meaning to vision Allah is watching you to fear from everything you do it will please Allah or not to be careful of your motion emotion action Desire, everything. Be careful. You're really watching what you're doing. You're not a slave to your desire. You're not anymore. Now you are on a level where you're really reaching to be the level of a worshiper and completely slave of Allah. And Allah is watching me. This is one level. Call it al khawf al muraqaba fear and vision Allah is watching me. And if I finish this level, I go to another level, which is the highest one, to vision Allah. Not meaning vision Allah with my bare eyes, no. But I will be with Allah in every aspect of my action. I do it purely to Allah. I try to please Allah. Before I say anything, I ask myself. I really control everything. I become a real slave to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma jahanna min al Oh Allah, make us a man to see Allah. And once you reach that, now you reach the level of happiness, the ultimate happiness, when you really with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. At this time, everything you have in your life will be full of joy. Calamity or no calamity. Good time or bad time is equal, because you have no bad time at all. You have no agony. Nobody will bother you. You will not flip and flop. At this time, a moment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah prescribed it in Quran. Those believers, the one who reached this level, what Allah said about them, those the one they will be on, on, on only contented with the dhikr of Allah. In a state of contentment with the remembrance of Allah. And their heart is only content with Allah. And once you reach this level, really, seriously, you will not flip and flop. You will not flip and flop in the first time. You will be in a very peaceful, steady road. Why? You are already with Allah. Yes, once in a while a, a shaitan can attack you. But for a very small amount of time, and you go back to your own nature, which was Allah. Now, once you reach this level, something else will happen. You will realize you're not in here to enjoy your life. You are here to work for your own creator. You want pleasing him. 
your ultimate pleasure when you are remembering other with Allah, when you invite other to Allah, when you act according to what Allah wants. Even if somebody makes you upset, it doesn't bother you. Why? You are with Allah. You do not want to lose the state. Nothing can really damage the state. Nothing can penetrate this state. Why? You are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you're busy trying to please Allah with every action. Allah love. In all kind of situation. And now you start really working to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you want to elevate the name of Allah in earth by spreading the word of Allah in earth in action, in manner, in behavior. Let's take a couple of examples. One companion, he was lying down and his head in the lap or the leg of his wife. And all of a sudden, this man started weeping, crying so heavily. And the wife started weeping too. And the husband asked her, why are you weeping? Why are you crying? She said, I saw your condition, and I saw you crying, and I cried for you crying. What about you? Why are you crying? He said, a verse of Quran I remember. It makes me cry. The verse of the meaning of none among you except they will pass through hellfire. This has been already ordained and written. The companion used fear from this verse. Even a lot of them, they get the key to paradise. But they fear even they might pass her fire and they might spend some time. But look at them. Here he is with his wife, but his heart connecting to the hereafter. Again, sincerity and closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even in the intimacy time and very special time, their heart is connected to Allah. Today sometime, if I do not get fulfill my desire, I go out of work. My personality change. My behavior change. I have no patience. I start making mistakes. I have to ask myself, is really my heart with Allah? We're going to talk about that, inshallah, very in a few moments. I just take you to the journey of Iman, who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once you are on this level, you do not worry about nobody except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Doesn't mean you become selfish, it's the opposite. You become loving to everybody, even the sinner, the bad one, the disbeliever. You want everybody to reach what you reach. You try to share with them. You think about them. You think how to really get to closer to them just to benefit them the way Allah benefits you. And this is what Allah wants. Once He gives you the gift, He wants you to share the gift with others. It's not yours. It's not yours to keep and isolate yourself. No. Because a real Muslim, a real believer is not a selfish, is not a greedy. We share, and we share with the ultimate, with our belief, with our faith, with our knowing, with our knowledge. 
The more we know, the more we have to give back what we know. Similarly, the more we have money, the more we give this money away to those who can need it and benefit from it. By this way, we become a beneficent to others. We become like the candle. It burns itself to light for others. And he's a believer. He burned himself for Allah. He burned himself to please Allah. His body, his image, his soul, his everything, his everything is for Allah. Now somebody say, you talk, it's easy to talk about it. But you do not tell us how we implement that. This is a good question. But before we do it, we go to the example of Ibrahim. Ibrahim alayhi salam. Peace and blessing be upon him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he elevated him in Quran by giving him a title. One of the best titles Ibrahim alayhi salam Ibrahim has, the father of all messenger and prophet, wa Ibrahim alladhi wafa. Ibrahim, the one he kept his word. Ibrahim alladhi wafa. One scholar he summarized it. Wafa meaning he kept his commitment between him and Allah. Because when we embrace Islam, it is a commitment. And we will be questioned about this commitment between us and Allah. Wafa bi jasadihi lil niran wa wafa bi qalbihi lil rahman wa wafa bi malihi lil dhifan He kept his commitment by giving his body to the fire for Allah. And he gave his heart to Allah. And he gave his money to his guests. What does this mean? We know the story of Abraham. When the king Namrod went to throw him in the fire. Wonder what happened. The engine of winds came. And he said, O oh Ibrahim, I came to help you. He said, Is Allah send you? He said, No. I ask Allah to come. And if you want, I can blow the wind. I let the fire completely towards the king and his people. And I save you. He said, It's from you. I do not need help. The king of rain, water, came. I'm sorry, the angel of rain came. And he said, O Ibrahim, O Ibrahim, if you want, I can send the cloud dropping rain heavily. I can shut the fire in no time. He said, Who sent you? Is Allah send you? He said, No. I came by myself by permission of Allah. He said, from you, I do not need help. Angel Jibreel, alayhi salam, he came. And he said, O oh, Ibrahim, if you want, I can win a tip of my wing. And Angel Jibreel, he has 600 wings. He opened two wings only. And they closed between east and west. How big? Angel Jibreel, alayhi salam. And he said to Ibrahim if you want, with one of my tip of my wings, I can carry all the fire and throw it in the top of them. And I will save you. He said, is Allah send you? He said, no. He said, I do not need your help. What does teach us? Real Iman, faith. Allah is a doer. 
Ibrahim alayhi salam, he has faith in his creator. He knows he is the doer. And he do not want anyone except Allah to help him. At this time, when the king command the people to throw him in the fire, tight, Allah command the same time the fire, and he said, O oh fire, be peace and call to Ibrahim alayhi salam. And what Ibrahim he said in a moment of throwing him in the fire? He said, Hasbi Allah wa al wakil. Allah is only my protector and He's only sufficient for me enough. I do not need no one except you, Ya Allah. You see? But he said it was full heart, full conviction. He didn't say it was his tongue. He said it was his tongue with his heart, with his soul, with his body, with everything. And once a person really sincere, Allah will accept. Only the sincere one. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests him, many, many years later, after many years, he didn't have any kids. And now he has Ismail alayhi salam. Ismail. And when he has Ismail, and Allah commanded him to butcher him, I'm sorry, to slaughter him, to sacrifice him for his own love. Meaning he tell him, Oh Ibrahim, slaughter your own son. Sacrifice your own son. Meaning, O oh Ismail Ibrahim, cut your own love from your heart toward me. Meaning now, the one who obey, he obey whom? He obey the one who command him to butcher or to cut the only love he has. Meaning he has to have a love to the commander more than the love of the person he will do it to him, which is his own son. What all this story to do with us? It teach us what Allah want. Because all messenger and prophet is just a setting example. And there is story in Quran, not, not just to see it and read it, but to really live it and take from it and try to imitate. Our job is to try. And the ability and tawfiq from Allah. And he was generous. He used to send, spend all his money for his guests. And he would not even eat alone. Now, let's go to the journey of now the heart. Now we know we can read Quran, we can read the life of the Prophet وسلم, we can read the life of all the Prophets, books available in the market, we can read the life of the companion. Now, how I really go to the journey of correction? How I go to the journey of sincerity? Number one, I have to someone I trust. I have to have somebody to trust. His knowledge, his qualification, his manner and behavior. And put myself in the front of this person and ask him, this who am I? Which area I should start with? And this person will lead you to clean yourself according to his knowledge. Somebody said, where is, where is this person? I cannot find this person. And yes, you're right. Very difficult to find these people. And most of the times they're hidden. Nobody knows them. What you do? Call Allah. Allah will help you. If you're sincere, call Allah. Allah will help you. And he allow you. 
and he will open your heart he opened the ways to reach according to your sincerity this is number one to really have the pure desire to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala second you have to put and set all your bad habit writing down if you like take a look at them if you like by yourself when you are alone and honestly start working one by one to eliminate your bad habits and bad desire and bad conduct today I see people every time they have something happen this is me what do you want from me Allah create me this way I get anger this is my habit somebody's lazy this is me somebody's dirty this is me don't blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala astaghfirullah al-azim don't blame nobody except you and your own devil you obey your own devil you see Allah created us all of us with weakness and he put us in different situation and after that he want us to go to the journey of Islam and the journey of Iman how to start working and struggle against all that is a struggle hear it correctly is a struggle Mujahada is a real jihad jihad al nafs the struggle against your desire and your nafs yourself is not easy to put your nose down to be humble to admit your mistake today I find a lot of people it take a lot to say I'm wrong and first they do all the wrong and after that they said I'm wrong and some of them they do not even want to say it this meaning is so arrogant or some of them they doing it over and over again and said this is me you cannot do that what happens if you die at the moment of your mistake where are you going do you know at this time who you believe who you worship you worship yourself you worship, you worship your ego your desire your weakness your devil and Allah wants us to be strong because Allah is strong and once we become with Allah we become strong our fault become weak our habit become weak our bad manner become weak and our good conduct becomes strong our good behavior will become strong why I am with Allah how I reach that Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali he explained it first we have to know this heart connecting to three major tubes this tubes is the one feeding the heart with what inside the mouth the eyes and the ears according to what you see some picture will go to the heart and the heart start desire it according to what you hear again it will go in according to what you say it will go in and you have another big tube is internal is the internal tube between your brain your thought and your heart and shaitan has four levels to penetrate into any human being four level of shaitan to penetrate to any human being number one he start whisper talk about something try to bubble you up if you are a weak person he will attack you and you go to the second cycle second level he make you 
think about all this waswasa, all this whispering. Once you think about it, he will increase your thinking. If you allow it to keep going, he will go and take you to the third journey, the third level. What is it? He will give you the desire and love to implement what you were thinking about, what you thought of. And if he allow you, and if he will succeed to go to this level, very easy. He will bubble you up to be busy thinking how to implement what you desire. And it's finished. Number four, he make you busy of different action was the beginning of his own whisper. This is the four level of shaitan, the devil, Satan, how to penetrate toward us. But also is, this Imam Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, he explained to us, is also, he summarized four door for shaitan, four doors for shaitan, Satan, devil. Each door, if we control it, he cannot enter. First door, believe it or not, is a stomach. Food. Some people really a slave to their own desire of food. Now, scholar Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, he said something beautiful. The beginning and the journey of purifying your heart has to be a struggle against your desire. What this meaning? He said everything has to be the opposite. You desire to eat, do not eat. You desire not to eat, eat. Do whatever against your desire. You want to sleep, do not sleep. You do not want to sleep, go to sleep. Whatever, how much you fight your own desire, how much you will start the journey of really controlling your own self instead of yourself controlling you, meaning desire. By the way, number, level, number one is the stomach. The desire of eating. Eat whatever you dislike. And even he said, whatever you like, bake it, do it, buy it, whatever, and give it to your enemy. Give it to somebody you dislike. Somebody talk about, about you. Just to force your desire to be completely down. Why? We will come in toward the why later on, insha'Allah. And the second door of the devil, believe it or not, sleeping. You want to sleep? Get up. You do not want to go to sleep? Go to sleep. The desire of sleeping. Opposite. Everything you want, opposite. The success is the opposite of what you desire. And the third one, the desire of, what do you call it, intercourse or intimacy. The sexual desire. Again, even if you marry, control it. Not every day. The early scholars, he said, it should be once a week or twice a week. Why? To build that, not to build the habit of a desire and increase it. It become like food. And once it's missing, you go nuts. 
you become unbalanced. Shaitan will enter and use you. This is how it works. Some people, if they have the time of eating, is delayed, they go crazy. I'm hungry, don't talk to me now. I need my food. Some people are addicted to coffee. If they do not have it, they go nuts. Some people are addicted to tea, smoking, you name it. Any addiction or any things, you like to give it to your desire to come down, shaitan will enter from this door. This is, we said, call it the door of the devils. And the number four, talking. You like to talk, keep quiet. You do not like to talk, talk. And when we said talking, you talk about Allah. No gossip, no bad biting. We're going to go through it now. But we just go step by step now. By this way, if we really want to reach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we start close the entrance. We close the entrance of the doors. What's the entrance of the door of the heart? Mouth, ears, eyes, and thought. Once we start controlling that, or those entrance, we have to control the doors. Eating, sleeping, sexual desire, and talking. A lot of work has to be done. Paradise is not cheap. And to fulfill your heart with Allah, all this dirty has to come out. To have control over your thought, control over your eyes, control over your ears, control over your mouth. Now we will go to the actually what happened. If I do not control that or those doors, shaitan will come in from the entrance and use them. Every time I see food, I go nuts. I go crazy. Every time I see bed, I like to go to sleep. And if I do not get my enough, enough amount of sleep, I go nuts again. And he bubble me. You see, any time you are a slave to some habit and some desire, the opposite automatically the shaitan will get you. This is how it works. Only those who control their desire is the only one can be saved from this. You find anyone has any desire controlling him, he has to get anger very easy. He will flip-flop very easy. Her personality will flip-flop very easy. Her, his or her, her emotion will flip very easy. We meaning something wrong. Meaning they never work to purify their heart and close the entrance and close the door. Unless we do that, and we start go to a doctor. Who's the doctor? The doctors of the hearts. Those who are specialized in hearts. And we listen to their advice. And we take it seriously. Because each one of us has a unique situation. Again, if we do not find these people, what we do? We call Allah, oh Allah, give me sincerity to see my faults. Even listen to even your own enemy. Because your enemy sometimes is the best to tell you about your faults. And you start to take it seriously. And you start working. Now, for example, when we talk about the entrance of the heart, we block it. I do not sit in our own companion. 
i do not sit in a place where it has music or t v or something nonsense or bag biting i do not engage in laughing giggling for nothing for a long time i do not look to be will down i do not look to other with desire i try i try i try to avoid it the more you avoid and your more struggle the more you build control and if the devil coming and give you thought about somebody or something or situation you close it don't allow it to keep continue do not allow the thought to be a thinking no cut the thought finished no whisper change it how we do that ala bi dhikrillah tatma'in al qulub with the dhikr of allah with the remember of allah the heart will be content and also remember of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it shields the heart it lights the heart it shields the person it gives them vision it gives them light By this way, we have our tongue and our heart full of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once we do that, the entrance of the devil will shrink, will become so tight, he cannot enter. Unless we forget and we go now to love, we go to the nonsense, any talk. This is the time that shaitan will attack us and will be just an attacking. By me, my eyes, I try to control it. My ears, I try to control it. My mouth, I try to control it. Sometimes even he take you to the past, or he lead you to the future, and even he make you so miserable about what happened in the past, or he make you so scared of what going on in the future. And he, he, you know, he make you forget. Is the future in the hand of Allah? And past is past. And now he make you lose the present. Now we see how it go. This topic is a very long topic. It's a very deep topic and it's a very important topic. But we have to take it step by step. And again, Sincerity is a key. Honesty. Visioning Allah is watching us. Checking our intention. Do not allow again thought to go on and in in the heart or in the brain. By cut it. And switch it right away with remember of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Be with the right companion, with the right people. Try to be with those who are benefit you. If nothing, you do dhikr, remember Allah, read good book, read Quran, read a hadith, read the teaching of the Prophet, go visit some sick people. We have a lot to do. Go help others. Go even visit the neighbor. Be generous, be kind. Call someone and said, how are you? How are you doing? If anything I can do for you. You think about others. Now this is what we talk about there. How to really, in reality, close the entrance of the devil. Now we go to the door of the devil. We said, the door of the devil is four, only four. But from this four, a scholar agree, these are the major doors. If we close them, or we try to control them, shaitan cannot come in and penetrate inside. He can attack us once in a while, and we have to. We are a human being. 
But the state of the heart will be always in contentment with Allah. Now, how we do that? Again, very simple, but it needs sincerity. Fight your own desire and habit. You dislike to eat, eat. You like to eat, do not eat. You picky about certain food, do not pick and choose. Just to fight your own desire. That's why you have no special desire. The more you break your desire, the more you become very simple, very humble. And now, all of a sudden, shaitan cannot bubble your desire. You see? Some people, if they do not get amount of sleep, oh, wow. Look at the Muslim in Ramadan. A lot of them, they go nuts. Why? Because they do not eat enough. Don't talk to me now. Talk to me after iftar. I'm fasting. I should, I'm supposed to be in a state of contentment. A state of fasting. I should be happy. Not of agony. But the agony because all they think about their own desire. I'm not eating. Something is wrong. How to do that? Start fast once in a while. Fast your desire from what you like. Not everything you see, you grab and you eat. No, fight it. Similar, the sexual desire has to be controlled. Unless we control it, we become like animal. And the desire will overwhelm us. And it has no end. And once we cannot fulfill it, we become upset. And once we upset, we get nuts, and shaitan penetrate again. And we think, why we, why we acting abnormal? It's not because our sexual desire is really controlling us. No. It's shaitan is actually controlling us because of our weakness. Because the heart is not anymore with Allah. You see, this is the whole thing. Once the heart is not really with Allah, finished doesn't mean I'm saying nobody have a desire. Yes, but we're talking about controlling your desire for Allah. This is why this is journey of Iman 3. We do not say journey of Iman 1. This tip is not for anyone. This tip is only for those who want sincerely elevate their Iman. They want to really reach. They want to really test the sweetness of Iman. They want to test it with sweetness of closeness to Allah. Once you test the sweetness of closeness of Allah, no any another feeling will really be worth it to sell the feeling with Allah. Oh Allah, I wish we test this feeling. And oh Allah, allow us to have it. Allow us to have it. And not, O oh Allah, to be a slave and servant to our own desire. Another door of the devil, door of the heart, is talking. Again, we have to control our mouths. What we say and to whom we say, for what purpose and why. Is for me or against me? Is what I'm saying elevate my iman? Is belong to Allah or just nonsense or a backbiting? Or just gossip? Whatever it is or a lie. Today we do not really give too much to our tongue. And the Prophet ﷺ one time he talked one of the companion tongue and he hold it with his hand and he said, Amsik alayka dali. Hold tight with that. He said, Ya Rasulullah, do we will be responsible of what we say? He said, Takalatka ummah. May your mother bury you 
before you said what you said. The people would not be thrown in hell fire except of what they say. And today we do not give. We say anything. We keep commitment and we do not fulfill. We lie and we do not care. We make people upset for nothing. And we're ready to attack anybody. We're ready to gossip. We're ready to back fighting. It's almost like the right of Muslim become very cheap. And we forget everything we say we have angels, one in the right, one in the left, writing all the good deed and all the bad deed. Everything is written. If I think about everything is written, I should be worried. If I visioning Allah is seeing me, Allah is watching me, Allah is bear witness about what I'm doing, Allah is all hearing. I should be worried about what I'm saying, what I'm doing, with whom I'm doing, or whom I'm saying, for what benefit, what is the intention. You see, now all what we're talking about it now is state of muraqaba, vision. Vision, Allah is watching us. Now, if we finish those and we start really work against all our desire. And when I said against, it's against. Some people said, no, you can choose a different word. Toward. Because against, I know, it's like against the current. Like many times I said, Allah prescribed. Some sister tell me, no, describe. Yes, describe is the right word. But do you know sometimes why I use prescribe? Because in my heart, when I go to the pharmacy, and the, pharma, the doctor give me a prescription, I go with complete faith. The prescription, when I take the medication, will cure me. Stop for Allah and Azim, because it's supposed to be everything by the hand of Allah. But I'm just giving example. Allah is described to us in Quran, but also Allah described to us in Quran the cure, the cure of our disease. Yes, Allah created us with some disease, and Allah described to us the prescription how we cure the disease. And the Quran full of description. How to cure our disease for those only who have vision, for those only who have fear, for those only who have heart and mind, for those only who use the power of intellect, for those only who love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will find all the verses about curing and how to reach Allah only for certain quality of people. Those who have vision the hereafter and want to really reach and want benefit and want to gain something after this life and do not want to lose the hereafter. Now, how we go to the really action? Let's take, for example, from morning to night. One day, we slice our life for one day. How I wake up? I wake up by the name of Allah and I try to remember Allah and said one of the report, dua or dhikr and thank Allah He gave me life after a small death and ask myself what I'm going to do today? Is me today going to lose my day or I'm going to gain my day? Just learn to think about one day. Do not think about yesterday, do not think about tomorrow. Because this is the work of shaitan. The work of shaitan make all of us either busy about the future 
and be miserable or busy about the past and be miserable in different way some people fear from the future and security and some people fear from the past and what they've done and what now what happened the shaitan make you lose your day my dear brother and sister in Islam only think about today oh Allah allow me to gain my day oh Allah allow me to do good deed will benefit me in this life and the year after oh Allah provide to me something can be really pleasing to you ya Allah and benefit to mankind oh Allah use me to spread your word ya Allah this is how I wake up make me worship you Allah much better ya Allah than yesterday oh Allah allow me and give me the ability to do more ya Allah it doesn't have to be with the tongue it can be with the heart now you get up you try to make salat al fajr on time you try to sit for a little bit and remember Allah and if you can you sit until sun rise if you do so is a lot of benefit may Allah forgive me sometime I do sometime I don't but it's a struggle we have to try everything I'm saying is to try honestly try you said I do I try and I see you after two years and your habit is the same is not trying sincerely trying meaning you really try you try to eliminate one habit after another I'm talking about the bad habit when you eat again you remember eat whatever is good for you to benefit you and break your habits if you eat big amount be it small if you eat small eat a little bit more shaitan is taking every one of us from different angle some people do not eat at all until they get sick and they forget they commit sins and they think mashallah they so pious and they do not want you know abuse their body with amount of food until the point they get sick and they have no energy at all to even move and some people eat to the point they become so fat they become like baby elephant with all respect to you this is extreme wrong and this is extreme wrong Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he provide to us an earth for our wealth and our need to build our energy to able to continue and worship Allah much better because if I don't have enough energy how I do it and if I have too much I go so lazy I cannot move you see the extreme and this was the shaitan do he take you from one extreme to another and the wise person is the one who try to balance it because we are the ummah of wasa we are the ummah of balanced middle And we could continue our day with remember, remember of Allah. We should read a little bit of Quran in the morning. We should read some hadith to really remember where are we going to get some wisdom from Allah, some wisdom from the Prophet Before we go to sleep, similar. And in a daily life, we think about our intention and what we engage in with now you are in a journey of Iman with Allah when everything become for Allah and if you elevate when, when, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept everything you do it has remember of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now you will go to the final level if you pass all that you go to the final level the level of you watching Allah meaning you are in a state of contentment with the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and everything for Allah you will not get angry very difficult to get angry 
And if you do, you will get anger only for Allah. And if all your action will be for Allah, your face will look toward Allah, your heart toward Allah, your body toward Allah, your action toward Allah, everything toward Allah. You'll be still stay in a state of wudu all the time, evolution. You'll be still in dhikr. You try to sleep with the sunnah, your head toward qibla, or your head in the right of qibla. You try to sit humble. You do not sit with arrogant. You try to talk with humble. You do not talk with arrogant or authoritative. You try to be nice to people. You try to be kind, down to earth. Why? Because Allah is the greatest. And who you are? Who am I? Nothing bubble you up. If too many things bubble you up, something is really wrong. You see, a lot of us might worship Allah too much. But in the meantime, Shaitan bubble us from different status of one, one of the doors I'm talking about. And today, even today, when you go to somebody and advise you, you will try to put in some excuse instead of take it seriously and try to do something about it. Why? We have no respect to each other. It's another thing. One of the ways of journey of Iman, we have to get somebody we trust. What about Allah? If we really trust Allah, He gives us all the advice in Quran. The Prophet ﷺ gives us all the advice. If I really trust Allah and trust the Prophet ﷺ and I won't reach, I should read the advice of Allah and take it seriously. Take the advice of the Prophet and take it seriously and try to implement. Not only take it and that's it, take it and try to implement. Now, what else? What about the companion? Who is my companion? I should have a companion. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, Al-Mu'minu mir'ata akhi. The believer, he's the mirror of his own brother. Or sister. Imagine I have no brother or sister. I listen to them and I respect their own advice. How I look like if I go every day to work or whatever where I'm going and I do not look to the mirror at all? How I look like? How inside look like if I do not have a brother or sister close to me and give me the prescription for myself? the advice by this way I need a journey looking for a companion and this companion I have to look for his quality or her quality and trust and whatever advice I trust today once a person give you advice or give me advice I get upset if I get upset meaning my arrogance is so high I do not want to put my nose down and really take it for my benefit. Because my companions, the brother or sister who love me, they do not, they not my, my enemy, shaitan is my enemy. Listen carefully, we have to wake up. We obey the devil, but we're not obeying Allah and we're not obeying the Prophet and we're not obeying even our own brother and sister, the one who advise. Like they butcher us. Like you slaughter us. No. We should take it with humble. Even if they are wrong. And there's another question. If they are wrong, how is he wrong? You see, Shaitan, every time somebody gave me advice I do not like, I said, you're wrong. This is a disease. We have a big disease. Every time you give me advice, you're wrong. Do you know what this means? Meaning you're really sick. You're really sick. And you're so arrogant you do not want to admit your mistake. 
some kind of take from us a long time before we admit our mistake. This is why we keep repeating it over and over again and no change. My dear brother and sister in Islam, this tape is not for anyone. This tape for those who are sincere and they really want to reach. And they want to reach to really test the sweetness of faith. The sweetness of closeness to Allah. To reach the highest level in paradise. To gain the pleasure of Allah. To gain the love of Allah. Because once you really start closing on that, your vision will start appear and become clearer, clearer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will elevate the veils. Because all the struggle from whom? For Allah. Now Allah will give you the help. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran He said, لا يغير الله ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم Allah do not change the condition of people unless they change the condition of themselves and the Prophet sallallahu he said الإيمان ما وقره القلب وصدقه العمل faith is what can keep in your heart and completely sincere shown in your action and your limbs together now we are in a journey of real faith, sincere faith. Once we have all those, we do dhikr in the morning, we do dhikr at night. Meaning we remember Allah in bundle in the morning, in bundle at night. When we go to sleep, we make sure we forgive all those who make mistakes and mischief and an oppressor to us. And we make sure, O oh Allah, forgive us for any mischief or oppressor to others. O oh Allah, and we keep crying to Allah and asking Allah to purify us and make tawbah and for ask Allah for repent and forgiveness. And also, we connect our heart to Allah, not in our desire. You see, once you connect your heart in the time of sleeping to Allah, no desire will over, overwhelm you. Your desire is now is captured. Captured by what? The love of Allah. You see? This is why now any condition is no problem. Because you have the love of Allah in your heart. But this way condition outside do not bother you. Do not penetrate in your heart because your heart have no desire for nothing except Allah and Allah, His situation and His status do not change. This is why your manner, your behavior, your conduct is so peaceful, is so kind, is so content with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You do not anger very upset, very easy. You do not anger other. You do not insult others. You do not make mistakes to others very easy. Because you are watching, you are fearing. You try to be kind and nice. You try to be humble. Because you remember who you are. And Allah is the greatest. This is the journey of Iman in the reality. And this only, we cannot go through it unless we sincere. And unless we reach Allah and we ask Him, Oh Allah, give us the ability, give us the tawfir, give us the light, give us blessing from you, Ya Allah. Bless us, Ya Allah. Help us, Ya Allah. We need your help, Ya Allah. We need to reach you, Ya Allah. We need you, Ya Allah. According to how much you desire Allah, Allah will give you. And again, Allah will not allow you to have Allah in your heart unless you have no desire for no one except Allah. Just saying Allah will become more beautiful and more benefit, and more joy and peace, more than any desire you have. You become all your desire in one desire. 
how to get closer to Allah, how to remember Allah more, how your heart will be content with Allah. Any time you involve in something, get you away from Allah, you feel sick, something is wrong. And any time you are with Allah, you are content, even if you're sick, even if you have no money, even if they throw you away, even if they call you names, all messenger and prophet, similar to the situation happened to them. My dear brother and sister in Islam, let's go to the journey of Allah. Let's really taste the sweetness of Allah in our heart, the sweetness of faith, the victory with Allah, victory against ourselves, against our desire, against our devil, against our weakness, against our habits. Let's really grow up, not in age, not in weight, not in money, but really grow up toward Allah, elevate ourselves towards the quality of angels. Because only two ways, one way up, one way down. One way up toward Allah, toward angels, with angels, with the light, with contentment, with tranquility, with peace, with love, with light. And the another way, with, 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 with Allah, may Allah forgive us and get us away from that. is with shaitan, with the devils, with the darkness, with the sickness, with the uncertainty, with hellfire, with calamity, with miserable, and misery, and sadness, and jealousy, and hate, and arrogance. And by the way, we have 66 diseases we have to cure from our heart. I will let me just mention some before I forget. Arrogant. The opposite of that humble. Jealousy. Envy. Greed. Ego. Unsecure or insecure looking for money, afraid from provision, afraid what happened to more, fearing from someone, loving someone too much. I feel sad when I see a mother loving the kids too much to the point she forget Allah. Or a father love his wife or his kids more than Allah. Or a woman loving her husband and she go nuts if the husband or the man go away or he didn't treat her the way she want. But all this is nothing wrong with our action because we have to have a trial. But the trial is really, really amplified because our desires. But if my desire was Allah, it will not make a big difference. Because my heart contained with Allah. Allah. With the name of Allah. With the attribute of Allah. With the quality of Allah. With the king of all the king. With the master of heaven and universe. And all my thought, my feeling. Only to please Allah. It is a journey is a struggle and if we do not take it now when we will take it before the time of death and we cannot delay it and one of the tricks of shaitan he tell you tomorrow don't worry about it tomorrow and tomorrow become tomorrow tomorrow become tomorrow and once he get you by the tricks of tomorrow you will be finished and you will never accomplish anything but the real believer he think, I might die tonight. How I meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? With what kind of quality? With what kind of status of my heart? 
the another thing the devil will attack you with the uncertainty the future and we forget everything is written and we believe we are a believer of destiny good and bad even if we do not like it it has benefit to us but I do not make mischief and say it is my destiny no but if I believe in destiny and I believe everything is written I will be content and believe in what Allah has written for me is the best for me even if it's something I do not like because anything happened to me against my will and I do not mean it meaning is distant and once it's distant three things I have to get and I do number one believe of what happening to me it is the only and the best goodness for me Allah given it to me number two is I have to have complete contentment in my heart. Number three, I have to be patient of what's going on. If a disease, a calamity, a husband and wife, divorce, this and that, kids, accident, you name it. Missing money. All of us will be examined and tried in a different way. Nobody will get everything. No way you will get everything. Everybody will get something and missing something. But sometimes we do not see that. Because shaitan make us busy with others. And this is another thing. Not to be busy with others, but busy with our own mistakes. My dear brother and sister in Islam, we have a journey of faith. We have a long way. And we do not know when the time of death comes. When the angel of death come, we cannot continue. This is a time for struggle. And after death is a time for pleasure, inshallah, or torture. May Allah save us from his torture and gain us with his own pleasure and mercy and contentment. O oh Allah, shower us with your light. O oh Allah, shower us with what, we, what you like for us. O oh Allah, open our eyes to set the priority where are we going? And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَيْنَ تَذْهَبُونَ Where are we going? إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا ذِكْرٌ لِلْعَالَمِينَ All this a reminder to mankind and jinn. For those, لِمَنْ شَاءَ أَنْ يَسْتَقِيمُ To those who want steadfast in the right path. وَمَا تَشَاءُونَ إِلَّا أَنْ يَشَاءَ اللَّهِ رَبُّ الْعَالَمِينَ And you do not have any will and any ways to reach without the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the all doer. He is the ruler and the creator and the provider and the owner and the controller of heaven and universe. Once we do that, the nafs, the desire will become calm down. And we will discover something. We have a duty. Meaning all this to control our desire, to connect us to Allah, to make us really a real slave and servant to Allah. And once I'm a real servant and a slave to Allah, and my love to Allah start increasing, now I start visioning something else. I love to work for Allah. I, work, I love to be a worker for Allah. I love to be an inviter to Allah. What more than inviting to the one you love? What more than talking to the one you love? What more to talk about the one who provides to you? The one who has, he has all the quality? Once you discover the quality of Allah, you will not be in peace unless you want to talk about Allah day and night. Day and night, in every time. Because you deserve it. Who else has the quality? Who else? Who else deserves 
to be really thought about. Who else deserve to be wasted our time for? But when we spend our time to Allah, with Allah is not a waste. Allah save it for us. Anything pure for Allah, Allah save it for us. And we will get the price so high. We wish we do not lose any minute except of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My dear brother and sister in Islam, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the reality of where we're going. And we start sincerely the journey of Iman, the journey of faith, the journey of reaching, the journey of love, the journey of vision, the journey of fear, the journey of respect, the journey of working for Allah, the journey of peace, the journey of tranquility, the journey of security, the journey of contentment, the journey of spreading goodness, the journey of generosity. This is a major quality of the mu'min, the believer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to live as a Muslim Die as a Muslim, go to the grave as a Muslim, resurrect it as a Muslim. O oh Allah, allow us to live with a complete faith in you, Ya Allah. Fill our heart with complete faith in you, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, make us die in a state of complete faith with you, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, make us enter the grave with complete faith with you. And in you, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, make us resurrected in a day of judgment with complete faith in you and believing in you and your messenger and by the teaching of you and your advice and your teaching of your messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And by the way, my brother and sister in Islam, we cannot implement what I said unless you follow the sunnah. The teaching of the Prophet Because once you try to break your habits, you won't build the good habits. Who have the good habit advised to be followed and implemented is the teaching of the Prophet. And only the teaching of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, Muhammad We have to study it, we have to learn it, we have to calculate it, we have to imitate him, him and his illustrated companion. My dear brother and sister in Islam, O oh Allah, the only one he can give us tawfiq is Allah. My dear brother and sister in Islam, let's go to the journey of Iman with complete sincerity and we ask Allah, O oh Allah, give us the right sincerity, the honesty, the reality of sincerity in the seen and unseen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allow us to reach Allah because you, we cannot reach Allah without Allah. We cannot gain the mercy of Allah without Allah. O oh Allah, Allahumma razuqna, alman nafi'an, wa rizqan wa nasa'an, wa shifa'an min kulli da'a. O oh Allah, Allahumma razuqna, hudak, wa ridak, wa afraq, wa judak, wa karamak, ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi al-afarat hasana, wa qina adab al-nara. اللهم ارزق نفوسنا تقواها اللهم زكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم بارك لنا فيما نفعل واجعله خالصا لوجهك الكريم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين سبحانك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العظيم